Hey everyone, Steve Losh here, and I figured today I would do a quick screencast about a macro that I just came up with uh, in Vim. Uh, might give you an idea of how powerful Vim macros can be. Um, so I'm working on some Python code here for work, and I have these two lists of languages. And basically I'm trying to refactor this one into this one over here. Um, and so what I need to do is basically what this, this list is, it's a list of language codes, they map to uh, a translated English version and the native version. So it's more obvious if you look at something like uh, Arabic, right? This is, you know, the word Arabic in English, but wrapped in a get text thing. Um, and this is the actual uh, name. Um, so that's not really important, uh, the functionality. Um, but what I want to do is I want to take something like this Arabic right here. I need to take the native name from over here, right? And I need to put it over here, right? That's what I need to do. So doing this by hand would be kind of tedious because there's a whole lot of languages that we support. Um, there's a whole lot of languages over here as well. So um, I don't want to do it all by hand, so I came up with a macro to do it, and I'm going to show you how. So um, the first thing I did um, was uh, drop a mark at this line. OK, I'll, you'll see why in a minute. So basically, I'm going to start over here. I'm going to start on the first line. I'm going to start recording the macro. QA, I'm going to put it in the A register. Now, what I want to do, um, when I'm when I'm going to be replacing or adding the native name, I need to add it for the correct language code, right? So what I'm going to do is visually highlight the language code, and then press star. Um, and this isn't default Vim functionality. It's in my VimRC. Uh, if you search for like visual star in my VimRC, um, you'll find it. Uh, but that'll search for, quote, the language code that we're currently on, end quote. Um, there should only be one of those in this list. Um, there, aren't, there are no duplicate language codes. I already know that. So, All right, so we're searching for that. Um, right there, it doesn't actually put us anywhere, so that's fine. Um, now I'm going to go to the end of the line. Um, I have L mapped to that, capital L, but um, you can do it with, uh, I think, dollar sign is the default Vim. I'm going to go... Um, backwards to the first single quote uh, with capital F single quote, that's default Vim. I'm going to uh, yank around single quotes, right? So this yanks the single quotes and the native name of the language. Then I'm going to move to the right-hand window. I'm going to go to my um, to my mark so that I'm always, always going to start at the top of this uh, generate initial data function. I'm going to press N and remember, because we searched for quote, language code, end quote, um, it'll take us to the correct line in this right-hand list, right? Okay, then I'm going to go to the end of the line here. I'm just going to go back one, because um, I know they all end with parenthesis comma. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, paste, right? So that pastes the code in. Uh, it does need to be Unicode, though, so I need to put a U before that. So I'm going to go back to the previous single quote and insert a U, and then I'm going to go back to the left-hand window, back to the beginning of the line, and move down the line. And that's the end of the macro, so Q. So uh, it looks pretty complicated, but if I just run it, there you go. You can see that it grabbed the, I don't even know how to pronounce that language, <laughs> but grabbed that, put it in there. Um, I'm going to do a couple more. Um, yeah, and so you can see that for Afrikaans, uh, it did put it on the correct line. It didn't just move down one line in this file over here, right? That would have been wrong. It found the actual correct one because I searched for it, right? Um, now, this language doesn't appear over here, so it's going to break the macro. Um, but it's not going to do anything bad. It's just going to throw an error. It's going to say pattern not found. And that's actually good because it'll force me to look and say, um, in this particular case, there shouldn't be any languages over here that aren't over here. So this is a problem that I need to fix in the code. That's not a Vim thing. The macro did fine. Um, yeah, so I'll run it a couple more times. Oh, something went wrong there. AK. Oh, I don't have AK. Yeah, so some of these language codes are incorrect as well. Um, and there's nothing I can do about that. Um, I just need to, basically, I'll fix them over here. 
and then run the macro again and it'll work. Because um, eventually I'm just going to delete this file anyway, so it's not a big deal. Um, so yeah, it's not an entirely uh, an entirely automated process, but at least it's easier than manually copying and pasting or, God forbid, typing everything out. Um, so yeah, and you can see that SQ was all the way down there, and yet it still found it, put it in the correct place. Let me do a couple more. Oh, didn't find that one. AL. No, nope, looks like that's just not in there. Huh. Yeah, this uh, these uh, mappings aren't perfect, but uh, yeah. So that's a Vim macro. Oh, that one's broken as well. AMHU, is that it? AMH is what it's called. Oh. Whoa. Sorry. It's still early in the morning and I've only had about a third of a cup of coffee, so uh, still dragging a little bit. Run the macro. Yep, it put it over there. Um, I know AG doesn't work. Um, Arabic. Arabic works, and you can see that it copied the Unicode just fine. Everything worked. Cool. Uh, here's the actual macro. Um, there we go. That's what the actual macro looks like. In case you're wondering. Um, yeah, you can... Whenever you record a macro, like if I say, um, say, QB, right? It's going to put the macro in register B. Um, and what that means is I record the macro, so I'm just going to go down two lines and up one line, right? And I'm going to end recording. Um, if you... That's just a normal uh, paste register. So if I say double quote B P, it shows me the actual keystrokes. And the cool part is I can change that. So I can say, instead of moving down three and up one, I'm going to move down three and then up four, right? And then I can highlight that. And I can yank it back into register B. Oh, sorry. So I can highlight it, say register B, yank. And then I can run it with Q, or sorry, at B. And it, see, it moved up a line because it moved down three and up four. So it actually did get the new value. So if you make a mistake when you're recording a macro, sometimes it's easier to just paste it out and fix the one mistake rather than trying to, uh, rather than trying to um, re-record the entire macro, especially if it's a really long one like the one I did. So, all right, cool. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment and let me know. Thanks, guys.